The Football Pod on OTB Sports in partnership with AIB, proud sponsors of the GAA Senior Football Championship. Check out hashtag the toughest for more. Hello there and you're very welcome along to what is now episode 29 of The Football Pod with James O'Donoghue and Paddy Andrews. Lads, lovely outside isn't it? Too Paddy. lovely. Too good, yeah. Too lovely, sweating there, it's not easy. I'm not cut out for this stuff, I have to say. Anything over, once we get into double figures, I'm struggling like. You are a bit pink on the forehead there. I haven't even been outside today, but it'll work. Oh yeah. <laughs> 33 in Dublin. It's only 30, 31 down here. Jesus. Right. Right to down there now. Yeah. I, I didn't even check what it was around here. Uh, Paddy Andrews, we can't go any further without wishing you a very, very, very happy birthday from everyone at the football pod. Oh, yeah, Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. Did you happy do anything to celebrate? No. <laughs> no? Uh, no, I uh, had a couple of beers yesterday with the family, with my brothers. We were watching uh, watching the hurling, obviously, and the golf. And the weather was class as well. But today, no, it's stuff to do today. Work, uh, do this, and then go and coach the, the young lads now later on. So not the most exciting birthday, but uh, we go crack over the weekend there, yeah? James, did you Tom. make it to work on time? I did. Half five after the live show. I got up. I'd say I turned off a couple of alarms, all right. But I got up on, the, on one of them and straight into the car. We all took it easy this time around, didn't we? It was yeah. very different from uh, Castle Bar, yeah. We had stuff on. It was poor planning from us. Like, we should have booked the day off the next day. But uh, no, I was on the road myself early on Friday morning as well for a couple of things. So He was in rare form, Paddy, wasn't he? For anyone who hasn't watched back the Football Pod Live and came up with Crooks. Tommy Turner up there, like. Yeah. Just put two points into him and wind him up and let him off. <laughs> and he was very quiet then over the weekend, I thought. Oh, a lot of people. He was hung over. She must have been on the What was going on, James? What were you? Did you have a busy weekend or something? Huh? Did, did I have busy a busy weekend? Yeah. No, I did have a very tame weekend. Just right, though. You need him. You need the odd weekend off. Recharge weekend your coming up this weekend now. Look at him. Yes. <laughs> He's getting ready. We're into, we're into Intermediate Championship the week after the Ireland. Oh, Jesus. Straight so, into it. Straight into it. But Who have you got first round? Four, we've hopefully four games. If we qualify, we have three group games and a quarterfinal if we get through. So the, the, the final is this Sunday. There'll be Kerry Club games the following Saturday. Will it be six days later? Yeah. But for any club that doesn't have a Kerry player, say. So we've won. We've won. Keen Gamble is, is on the tr- kind of training panel. Actually, I'm... He, he could make the panel this week if if um if Gavin White is injured, but we'll see. But he's on the training panel, which doesn't they don't take that into consideration. So we're out the following week. So, so what be, you'll do no messing about. You'll do four days on the beer, come off it on Thursday, little jog on Friday, and play the match on Saturday. Right. <laughs> I am actually I'm actually suspended for the first round. Uh, <laughs> oh, tactical suspension. Sergio Ramos. Mistaken I Identity from last oh, year. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're a marked oh, yeah. man now, Jimmy. We won't it was going up for the full week in Dublin. Then, are you? Are off the ball putting him up for the full week, Tommy? I don't know, Paddy. I, I haven't been involved in the organization of that part of things. And I'll get a Jackson Court for Hotel for a week. Yeah, exactly. Well, if anyone has missed a roadshow last Thursday night, it's well worth listening back to. There's plenty of stories and crack from Kilmacud Croaks. We had our special guest, Michael Meehan, there as well. Michael Here's was in savage words. form. He was, he was brilliant. Uh, he brought up a couple of very interesting matchups, I thought. I wasn't sure if he was putting a spanner in the works with his Sean Kelly, David Clifford line. But I, I spoke to him it. again today and uh, he backed it up. He said that's what he's going with. So we, we're going to get stuck into the matchups a little later on the football pod. Before we get into that, lads, the hurling final yesterday. Paddy, oh. I'd love to get your perspective on this because Limerick had history in their sights. They were to become the first county outside of the historic traditional trio, Cork, Kilkenny, Tip, to do a three in a row. It surely weighed on the team in, in some way, but they were so calm on that field as Kilkenny chased them down. Were you impressed by that in a psychological sense, how Limerick handled the pressure around? Oh, yeah, I actually thought they did a brilliant performance. I don't, I don't think there was any sort of uh, nerves or anything. They started like a house on fire. Hegarty's got, Hegarty was off the charts yesterday, having been pretty, I suppose, quiet by his standards throughout the season, but he was phenomenal yesterday. I just thought it was a brilliant final. Like it wasn't that it was it was so close because Limerick were nervous. Our history starts as well. Like Kenny's performance, they're, they're look, they're 
whatever way you dress it up, Limerick are probably, Limerick are the best team and Kilkenny couldn't do that. But that just shows what a performance Kilkenny put in to push them all the way to the wire. Was it level with two or three minutes to go? Richie the Hogan put it level, yeah. Yeah, the two goals in the second half get them back in it. So Kilkenny were absolutely awesome. But that makes it even more impressive how Limerick, you're right, Richie Hogan taps that one over and you're thinking a lesser team, an inexperienced team, that could get them like they could crumble there, they could start doing stupid things, but they keep just playing their game and keep clipping scores. Impact off the bench, we said it all the time. It's going to be important this Sunday in the football final as well. The big thing, if Limerick were going for their first all Ireland yesterday, they might have lost that. When that pressure really came on, they didn't have that know how to get it done, that could have cost them. But yesterday it was just supreme confidence, just stuck to their guns. Didn't panic at all at any stage, despite what Kenny were throwing at them. It was a brilliant finish from them. And, and you know, just two or three times this season they've done that. Munster final as well, even the Galway game, the semis. Teams have put it right up to them and they don't panic. And that is the sign of a brilliant team. And they are a brilliant team. They've won four in the last five. That's three in a row now. They're, they're sniffing after the Dubs record, to be fair, to them in the football. Because um, I can't see many teams... Put up, they just looked like they're gonna get stronger with Key Lynch coming back as well. But it was a brilliant final. Jesus mm. Christ. If you the football provided half the entertainment and excitement that, that we've seen yesterday be a brilliant final. But yeah, uh, really what did you, you make know, of it, James? I like that was brilliant. In on all Ireland final day, right? It, there's so much more than form that comes into play. Like, and you saw Richie Hogan came on and Walter Walsh came on, who probably haven't had great yeah. years, but like they have these big game mentalities and these big game personalities to be able to impact the game off the bench. And uh, Same with Garrod Higgity. I don't think he's had a, an unbelievable year yeah. by his standards. He was absolutely ridiculous no, because yeah. he, has, he just comes alive on the big day. Like, if you're a manager there, you have to take way more than form into consideration. It's these personalities and these figures that win tournaments. Like, So it was unreal to see them. Like. But Kylie spoke about Hegarty, um and how this is after the game, how in the semi-final he took him off. Hegarty wasn't happy with his performance that day. And how he responded like was just awesome. Four minutes in, the rifle that ball into the top corner. Oh, the goal was off the charts. And never, finish. never mind that, Paddy. We were talking just off air about the point he got in injury time after putting in that all-time <laughs> great performance in the From first corner back Launches about 100 yards. Like, yeah. That's so the, best, the best point, though, was that I thought was the one that went to Hawkeye. And a whole oh. the umpire took it to Hawkeye. went straight over the black spot. <laughs> <laughs> was there any explanation given as to why what was the issue with Hawkeye? I seen they brought it back in, so they feel like they fit, did, was there any explanation of what went wrong or how it was fixed? Because it was used a lot yesterday, and it's probably going to be used in the football final as well. And I'm just thinking, it had no credibility the week before, and now all of a sudden it's making all these big calls in the All Ireland final. I am like, I'd like to know a little bit more what's under the hood there, how they fixed it, or what the issue was. Mm. Yeah. But when it comes to umpires, right? Surely your eyes deteriorate as you get older. <laughs> you should have two young umpires. You're coming in with ageism here, like a little bit. Every umpire, I, like, is waving these balls wide when they're straight over the bar. <laughs> you want? You have to be under thirty to do it. There should be a cap, an age cap on umpires. <laughs> okay. First clip for this week's football pod: age cap on umpires. Brought but you to know you what? They're in it. Catastrophic position as well. Like they're standing right up most. looking straight up, whatever about the football, they're hurling. Like, I, I'm terrible. I said, as it is, lads, I can hardly see half those balls going over the bar. Never mind if I'm standing literally yeah. at the post looking straight up. Like, that's not exactly the best position for them to be in. No, but, yeah, uh, but you look at there's there's techniques to it too. And you know, those umpires they're in all Ireland final form by this stage of the year. You know, they've been cooking nicely all year long, they're ready, <laughs> they're ready to go for the they're final. all a shambles, man. They are, they're up for the day out. Like, do you know what? <laughs> Two Tyrone boys come up to me at the end of our football pod show on Thursday night and said, why didn't you give us a shout out? And I was like, oh, I didn't know you were here, lads. Thanks very much for coming. They drove down and drove back to Tyrone that night. Jeez. They wanted us to bring up the fact that Sean Hurston is from the same club as Paddy Talley in Tyrone. Oh, yeah. I think they thought it was a very interesting addition to proceedings going into this weekend. James, Great. surely, regardless of what happens this weekend, Kerry can't be cribbing about the referee afterwards. Well, th th that's no guarantee that the ref is going to have a good game. But I I do have a small issue with picking referees. Like, there should be no, absolutely no link to 
anyone involved with the referee. Like if there's a carry game on, the ref should not be working in carry and refing a carry match, or he shouldn't be connected to someone involved through the club, in my opinion, because it just puts too much pressure on that referee. When there's a big decision, he might be thinking about what, how the decision will be interpreted. Cool. Like it does play into their mind. I'm telling you, no. though, like 150 million percent. Conspiracy theories. You sound like Donald Trump. After time, after time. <laughs> Just have a completely independent referee who doesn't know anyone. Best, you take best of luck in this country finding somebody. Any tallies from his club, that will put him off a bit on Sunday. No, not, not necessarily that tally one. That's a very small one. What? <laughs> But the working, but you're, working but you're like, I know, I know what you're referring to. I know what you're referring to. <laughs> you and it's even, I'm not having this. I'm not it's having a smaller rest. link. I think it's ridiculous. No. You're, it's an Ireland lads. Like, how are you going to find someone who doesn't have a connection to somebody else? Like, there's always going to be somebody. Connected I trust to the refs. I've no yeah. time for the umpires, but the refs. To be fair, I'm <laughs> more umpires. Yeah, umpires are car crash stuff. Yeah. Well, it is a big factor though as well going into the weekend because you saw how Colin Lyons let that game flow. Um, in the hurling at the weekend, yeah, hurling's you know, different. He lost his whistle. Yes. Yeah. So now, now we're saying it off air like that. Uh, and I, I kind of I, I like this. If the hurlers, if they duff their first touch, the ref just let them get buried. I wouldn't give a freak. Like <laughs> if they fumble it, you, it's all bets are off. You could win and absolutely clean the fell out. But if they get their first touch right and they're fouled, they seem to give it. But he, he had no time for anyone who was dropping a ball or fumbling it. Like it was like, yeah, pull away, lads. <laughs> Swing at them. James, but he's got one very soft one when he went to, to bounce it off the ground and back up in the second half. I thought the softest free of the day was Mike Casey coming out of defence in the first half. Yeah. See his face after though. He had a big shiner, like must have been like a head collision or something. Yeah. Yeah, I just thought he was charging up. Big lad. Jesus. Got him up. That's that. Yeah. So there'll be there'll be no one as big as Gerald Hegarty really on the pitch at the weekend, but there are some physically imposing players, lads, that are gonna yeah. cause problems. On both sides, so we're going to have a look at the matchups in a couple of minutes. Um, James, before we get into that, I just had a final question for you on that. Did you see any comparisons to 2019 when you were a point up on Dublin going down the stretch? Did the psychology come into it at all? The manner in which Limerick were so calm, the dubs were incredibly calm that day, they were a man short too, and they managed to drag themselves back into that game and bring that game to a replay. Did you notice Anton looking on at Limerick? I mean, football and hurling is so different because football is so much more controlled. Like, the Dubs that day managed to secure possession and they worked the right chance to get the score. Whereas, like, in, in 30 seconds in hurling, there could be three points. You know? So, <laughs> it's, it's very hard to manage the game in hurling. You just have to absolutely go at it. Whereas, I think, what the Dubs always showed was incredible coolness and that calmness to secure possession and do what they needed to do. But with the Limerick, Limerick side, it was just pure intensity and aggression and desire. It was kind of two different ways to do it because it's two blatantly different sports. But I didn't see too much of a resemblance, if I'm being honest. But it was impressive. It's very impressive by both, to be fair. Yeah. I think no, it's just a, a mentality. That was, and this is, like I say, Limerick have been around the block now. If, that, like say, if they were going for their first All Ireland yesterday, they wouldn't have been as calm. Remember the first one where they beat Galway and they, they nearly fall over the line? Joe Canning nearly brings them brings Galway back single-handedly. So once you've won and you've got that confidence, I always say this, it gives you, and you've been in that situation before, all those players have been in that situation multiple times yeah. and they've got the job done. So why would you panic? Yeah, Kilkenny are flying at us, they're coming at us from everywhere, but we've done this before, lads. And that sense of calmness, that just comes with experience. And that's the, that, that's the challenge for, for both these teams on on Sunday that it's going to be a massive victory for one of these teams um, but for, for Kerry like I said they were in this situation three years ago and they didn't manage it well Galway these guys have never been in this position so that's uh, I expect Sunday <laughs> overly promoting this but I think this is going to be a very cagey game I, I don't think you're going to get the kind of scoring free for all we seen in the hurling yesterday the excitement we got I think it's going to be very cagey even though Kerry maybe have a little bit more experience, they still haven't. A lot of those guys haven't got over the line in the biggest game. You see them against Dublin coming down the stretch, even though, look, I think we all, we're all in agreement over the course of the game, they're probably the better team. But they did everything to lose that game as well, coming down the stretch. So 
I expect, I don't expect to see total calmness <laughs> coming down the last five or ten minutes. Like we see, because the teams just haven't been there before. And mm-hmm. when you're in that situation for the very first time, chasing the ultimate, the all Ireland title, pressure does some crazy things to teams. But to, or what Limerick did yesterday was the exact opposite. They've been there, they've done it, and they knew exactly how to deal with it. And, uh, and it was brilliant to watch. Yeah. No, but in terms of holding on to the lead, like Kerry lost their shape completely against Mayo and drew Mayo on, and they did the same against Dublin, lost their shape completely. If yeah. Kerry take only that, if they're in the lead to fix against Galway, it'll be a huge improvement. Just keep your shape, keep a half forward line, keep a full forward line, so at least you have someone to get you out. And I agree, Jimmy. I agree, but I'm, I'm put you in a situation where Kerry are three points up with five minutes to go, they can smell the Sam Maguire. I know gonna, have to keep it's there, and, and, and the Galway backs are going forward, they're flying from everywhere. You can't just go. I'm telling you, you get. We did it against you guys in '15. We, we were the better team, and all of a sudden we were all back, and we we no shape because you're so close to it. You're thinking, I'll just get back, just do anything, just track runners from everywhere. Composure can go out the window. That's the intriguing thing to see. But and you're right because that was the biggest issue with Kerry. It wasn't necessarily like we touched on last week that their players were being outmaneuvered or they started being hammered on their individual battles. They just lost all shape. They'd no one up there. Mm-hmm. Even if they turned Dublin over, they know where to go. So that is a massive challenge for them. And I, I, you're right. I do think they learn from that. I do, and also, I feel that Galway are gonna. The way Galway will hurt them is trying to draw Kerry onto them, create space in behind, and hit them on the break. Kerry will be very, very aware of that. Yeah. On, on the That's why I think it's gonna be a cagey enough. I, I don't think it's gonna be one of the greats. I agree it's going to be cagey. I think it'll be a good game. I, I think it's going to be cagey too. But just on that chaos before we move on and losing shape, did Kerry not need to embrace that a little bit? Because there's one turnover and point that sticks out in my head and it's Paddy Clifford being involved in that scrum of Kerry players that overturn Kieran Kilkenny when Kilkenny's on a hot streak. Clifford ends up with a score on the far end of it. A very important score for Kerry. Did they not need to do that with dubs? Did they not need to match fire with fire? Like what, what are you talking about? Are you talking about the half forward line being an outlet? Are you talking about Clifford and Ganey staying inside? What exactly do you mean by shape? Oh, I, what I mean is when you're under pressure and the opposition is gung-ho coming at you, they're chasing the game like Dublin were, like Mayo always do because their halfbacks are the threat, like Galway are probably going to do the stages. So everyone is going and you have to track your man. Say the ball goes dead and it's down on the kick out and you are kind of lumbering back up the field but you're not in your position yet. So then the ball is played and suddenly you're playing midfield even though you're an inside forward. You, your team has lost all the shape. So when they, when you do have possession, you look up, there's no one in there. You turn around, next thing there's traffic on you, you're getting tackled, you might get turned over. You're feeding the, you're feeding the wave from the opposition. So if you do get back, it's so important to either... You've got to get back up the pitch. Win a free to give you time or just do a long bursting run to get back up the field just to give, give more space around that area. Okay. It happens to every team hanging on because at the end of the game, you're so tired, you find it so hard to get back up the field and you know that once you're there, you're probably going to have to come back again. Yeah. It's like doing a mass, a mass run. Do you know that run where you're doing like 100 yeah, metres yeah, up yeah. and back? Yeah. That's what it's like, but it, it just has to be done. Well, it's, it's also, Jimmy, like, particularly in a final now, like, if you're a, a point or two up and you're, the clock's gone into red, you're like, that's the difference. Like, it shouldn't, but it does. Like, tactics go out the window. Your job goes out the window nearly. You're just, lads are just, I'll do anything, just get back, just jump on lads' backs, fill them, do anything to slow the clock down. Whereas the best teams will have total clarity in yeah. those moments that this is the biggest moments. Yes, there's only a minute left, but this is the win and losing in the game. And this is like, you look at what, say, Killian McDade did against Armagh, that point he gets where it's on the line and Armagh think they've done it. And mm. Armagh just totally panic. They just bring everyone back when I think they should have tried and, and contest the kicker. And then eventually they should have two or three times in that play, they should have fell Galway out of range and they didn't. And McDay just goes, right, give it to me. Works, gets the ball into a shooting position and kicks the score. Whereas for Kerry, I feel on Sunday when Galway are putting them under the pump, they need bodies up the pitch. They need to nearly gamble with, say, Clifford and Sean O'Shea and go, lads, you guys stay up. And this is what, this is what I think a big thing about Galway should try and do. Yes, Galway are going to get bodies back, but if I'm Kerry, I'm saying, 
Johnny, you stay 50 yards from goal. You'll be the link there. Clifford, you stay inside. So we have an out. If we turn these guys over, we have a kick pass on to release the pressure. If your man goes, don't worry about it. We've 13 guys to deal with him. We, we don't need... What's Clifford really going to do defensively, to be fair? Like? No. So it's, it's the risk of staying with the pitch and giving you that structure and giving you that shape. And it's a release valve. Yeah. But if you turn them over... It's like, right, we can just kill it. I can give a 50-yard kick pass here and exactly. the pressure is completely off us. Whereas if there's no one up there, that's where you're going to get turned over. You're starting looking to try and hand pass the ball. There's 12 lads around you. So the shape and the composure and the clarity of thought is going to be massive, particularly in finals and particularly for, for a final like this where both teams are relatively inexperienced. Okay. All right. Well, you are listening to episode 29 of the Football Pod. Gearing up, lads, for the All-Ireland Final. We can't wait for it. As we mentioned earlier, there's two podcasts from last weekend that you're more than welcome to go back and listen to with Michael Meehan at our live show in Chemical Croaks. The Football Pod is brought to you every week with thanks to AIB, prime sponsors of the GA Senior Football Championship. Check out hashtag the toughest for more. We're going to be back right after this and we're going to get stuck into the tactics, the matchups and the questions that need to be answered ahead of Galway Kerry in the All-Ireland Senior Football Final. Whoa. You're very welcome back to episode 29 of the Football Pod with Paddy Andrews and James O'Donoghue. We're going to get right into it here. Lads, what is the key matchup? Nah, I'm not going to ask that question because we spent a lot of time talking about Clifford and Comer. It's clear that the questions about who's going to mark either one of them are key. If we're turning to the rest of the team here, can I ask you first off, who do you think is best matched to take Sean O'Shea this weekend? It depends where they play him. Like I think that Kerry will play Shawnee closer to goal again yeah and uh, because Paddy Clifford plays so well centre forward and Shawnee can do both roles very well so I think he's, he's going to start inside okay we might get on to the Clifford debate I know that Michael Meehan said that they're not going to play Sean Kelly on him I disagree okay he's saying Silk they put Silk on him so After I Michael Meehan thought yeah Silk will go on on Shawnee instead okay now like I know <laughs> Michael Meehan said that Sean Kelly won't mark Ganey, right? But I won't, won't mark Clifford. But my point at the time was he's captain of the team. He has to take that responsibility regardless because he's inside in that dressing room. He's full back. Clifford's full forward. He'd have to be moved out of his position in order to put someone else into his position as captain of the team. Not, I cannot That's see that happening. But you know, you know the thing is... The, the point and why it was kind of well, look we're not going to know we, we'll see on Sunday but the point Michael's making was like Kelly gives so much to Galway going forward so if you're on if you're Mark and Clifford you really don't have energy or time to be doing anything else you have to be 100% laser focused on dealing with him and you're not going to be sprinting up the pitch and that's that's what Kelly and particularly the way Galway are going to hurt Kelly this weekend is his legs and his energy going forward. He's a massive asset from going, coming from the full back line. But what? it's a tough one to call. But like, if I mark and Clifford, my, my own mentality, I'm not, I'm not spreading the fort. I'm saving every ounce of energy that I have to deal with this guy. And I'm going to be all over him all the time. Even when we have the ball, I'm giving it to him. So it is. It's an interesting point. I, I, I think he will. I think Kelly will mark him, but I can see where Michael Mead is coming from, and it'd be interesting. I hadn't thought of it like that, but when you actually think of it, I can see there's a pros and cons to it as well. I, I think one of the bigger matchups, lads, is is Conroy. I presume Jack Barry's going to pick up Conroy. I think Conroy is, is massively important to how Galway will hurt Kerry. If you think they get ten or eleven guys back into their half, they're going to try and break quickly. Conroy's their best foot passer. He's kind of their, he's their playmaker. He's the guy providing the bullets to Finnerty and, and to Palmer and to Walsh. Um, and he's so, if he's on it, we you know we can kick three or four long range points as well. So, so okay. he, he has that ability. But I think Jack Barry will do a job on him. We'll be given that task to deal with him. Okay. And then you're looking at, is it Thurman O'Connor goes on, on Killy McDade who tries to match him for legs? Like, where are you putting David Moore in then? I reckon it'd be, it'd be David Moore and Jack Barry in midfield. Just so you know, lads, I have, I have a chart here in front of me. I am tracking these matchups as they go, and I'll have questions at the end of them. So you're you think... saying David Moore is going to mark Killian McDade? No, I, I think Jack Barry will mark McDade 
Conroy mm. and Moore. They've marked each other a good few times. I think that I don't think it's a bad matchup for Kerry. I think that that Moran and Conroy be a good battle. I'd I'd back David definitely to put on top there. I'd be going for Conroy if I was Kerry though. I'd be taking him out. And Jack Barry's the man. He's your man to do that. Yeah. Can we? Can yeah, we? Stick? McDade, McDade has so much legs. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> Dave Moore is definitely not going near him. That's Jack Barry's thing. Athletically, he can stay with anyone. Physically, he can. I feel like Galway will back Killian McDade to get the best of Jack Barry there. Jack Jack is 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 very much underrated. Like Jack is an unbelievable team player in that. Yeah, he was a great job for the team. Yeah, he will not flashy like. Yeah, he won't do any flashy. He'll take it, his own personal game out of the way to fit in and do the defensive team job. So as much as McDade, if he is Mark McDade, will want to impact the game. Like Jack will be so an anthem if that is the case. He would do the same to Conroy, but... I, I think, think Conroy's more influential in terms of yeah. how Galway will hurt him. I think physically, though, more and Conroy probably match up better than... Okay. Like, and more and McDade probably doesn't match up. Okay, and then in the middle third, we're both expecting Jim O'Connor played in the Kerry half-forward line, I presume, and we're expecting Patrick Kelly to line out in the Galway half-forward line. Is there a chance that we're going to see those two on each other? Because they're both mismatches if you're looking at the half-back lines. I don't think... Yeah, Dylan McHugh is going to take Jim O'Connor. You could put Kieran Malloy in him, but I feel like Kieran Malloy is going to be elsewhere. I think that that would be a mistake by Galway if they did. I can see it happening because I think the Galway will manufacture eight or nine defenders in this game. Like they'll bring back Heaney. Heaney will probably play wing back for a lot of it. Yeah, and they'll drop Malloy in, mm. and they'll bring back Patrick Kelly, and they'll drop McHugh in. And they'll bring back Tierney as well. They'll play with Tierney, Connor, and McDade Tierney. across the middle. Yeah. They'll bring back Tierney to midfield and probably drop McDade. So they'll if actually have nine defenders. But the way I'm looking at that Galway team and, and how we feel they approach is that they'll have 12 guys who are back, nearly in defensive mode. Tierney, Conroy and McDade are the guys that can break out of that. Yeah. And, and then they're trying, going to keep their most forward players, Shane Walsh, Comer and Finnerty be closest to go. If, you're, if they're brave enough to keep those guys up the pitch, you don't need 15 guys back. I think if they get 12 back and nearly start, start engaging Kerry from their own 65 and, and the first line of engagement there, be a Conroy, be a McDade, and be a Maddie Tierney, hope for the turnover, and then McDade, go. You can run up and down Crow Park for the whole day, and Tierney and Conroy are brilliant foot passers, so they can kick 50, 60-yard kicks. And it's the quicker they can transition the ball, the more chance they have of hurting Kerry. Did Bring you carry on from take a risk, keep Walsh up around 65 yards up, keep Comer 20 yards inside him, and keep Finnerty in on the square. And if you keep those three boys up and launch, that's how I feel Galway can win this game. How on you? that, Paddy, you made a very interesting point last week that for as long as you've known them, Brian Fenton and Kieran Kilkenny, when they get a ball in their hands, they look for the furthest possible pass away. Yeah, and then they look for the it. next line and the next line. Did you feel like because of Dublin's perhaps the missing con, the lack of movement in the full forward line, the lack of an option, that Dublin's kicking game wasn't on against Kerry and that if it was on, like you're suggesting that Galway have, yeah. well, there well, is it, damage very, to be done there. It's very hard to have a kicking game if your transition is slow. That, that, that's the whole emphasis of it. If you, if Galway turn Kerry over and do a dairy on it and just say, right, everyone stop, let's keep the ball here, let's wait for us to get set up, that allows Kerry's, Kerry's biggest strength, their biggest improvement here has been their defensive system. That when they have time to get it set up, Morley's back there, Jack Barry's back there, they, their, their matchups are they're all over the defender, or the, their opposing attackers, and they're really structured. You can break that down by transitioning really, really quickly. If Galway bring everyone back and bring 15 guys back, they're not going to be able to transition quickly because they're known to kick the ball to. They need to have an outlet. That's what we're talking about earlier on with having structure and shape. The key for Galway to this game is for straight Kerry, get 10, 12 bodies back, try and turn Kerry over, force them with the bad shots. Kerry have struggled with that in the past, playing against that type of system. And when Galway turn them over, it's lightning quick. Use McDade's legs and get at the Conroy and Tierney where they, you know they can kick a 60-yard kick pass accurately. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, they've got to be brave to keep a couple of guys up, but... I'm looking if I'm going on that, that's I feel that's their best approach to win this game. And for Kerry, the, the challenge is to be uber, uber patient against this defense 
Mm. Kerry will have probably a lot of possession, but I haven't seen them nail their attacking game plan against a really set structured defence. And that's what Galway will have. Would you be worried about Kerry, James, when it comes to being patient? No, I wouldn't, because I think they'll work on it. Now, the one thing, if you were to downplay Kerry, you would say, look, they've only played open footballing teams this year apart from Cork, so they haven't had an exposure to it. And it can catch you at times when all you when you suddenly go into a defensive unit and you're looking around and all you can see is, is Galway shirts. Yeah. But for, Gal- for Kerry, what I think is important is if Galway do have 9, 10, 12 back, Kerry still need to keep there are four or five fellas back as well. And don't get completely excited and have everyone attack. And then suddenly you're turned over and Comer and Shane Walsh are 2v2 up the other end of the field. The, I think the biggest Kerry, thing I'd say, Jimmy, if Galway have three forwards, Kerry should keep five backs. Yes. Oh, and if if I Galway think, have two, keep four backs. That you have two extra men there. Plus two. I think, I think they'll have worked on that. And, and you've morally automatically. So then it's just up to him to say... To Paul Murphy, probably who's going to slip in, I'd imagine for Gavin White if he's not fit. Is what's the word on White? I I did hear it's not too bad, and I saw him. I actually saw him a couple of times around town. He's walking fine, but he was carried off a week ago. So I, I, but I'm being pessimistic. I'm just imagining he's going to miss it. But I hope in in a game like this, though, Jimmy, isn't isn't he? He's like he's the electric pace. Yeah. And if you're playing against, we always say it. If you're playing against a set defense. Either the ball moves really fast or the player moves really fast. And he's carries, well, he's, is he Kerry's fastest player? Well, he's one of the fastest in the country. Definitely one of the fastest, yeah. Do you remember, Paddy, how he punched the blanket against? Against Tipperary, yeah, last year for, for Clifford's goal. That was exactly it. That, that was kind of patient, 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 bang. There's a gap. There's the pace. That's, he, I think he'd be a loss. I think he'd be a big loss. But you're right. Again, we're not going to know. Jeez, we're every week we're talking about injuries and guys being yes. potentially in and out. It looked, I thought it was cramp initially in the game, but it looked then a, a bit worse. Um, and look, we haven't heard anything else. Outside. But O'Connor, O'Connor gave an update during the week and he was pessimistic about it. But um, yeah, he gave him every chance in the world. He said, said they'll probably, they probably name him. Probably. So so give him every just, chance. Yeah, yeah they give, give him every chance. chance. Yeah. And then yeah. if they have to change it all. But with Kerry, in terms of the patients, the one thing that Kerry don't do, if you go if you go back to, say, the Kerry team a couple of years ago when the Northern teams were very strong, they were used to playing that kind of slow, hand-passing game. Dublin had an exhibition of it against Tyrone that all around the final. You have to play very wide. Yeah. So you have to go down the sidelines, and then as you draw bodies in, you need to recycle it and go across the field, and you might have to come back again and come back again, and eventually spaces open up. Yeah. If, you, if you think about the way Kerry play, they don't actually play wide at all. Kerry play very kind of traditional, your bread and butter, try and get the kick pass into the middle of the D, take on your man. So it is a bit of a change in tack for Kerry. They'll have to be very patient going wide. I'd imagine the two wing forwards will see an unmerciful amount of ball. Like if Stephen O'Brien and Dermot O'Connor on the two wings, they could run this game. If they play well, they'll have a big say. And then you're looking at your Cliffords and your gain needs to come in on the loop and take the shots from the wider areas. That's what Dublin were unbelievable at. But Kerry never really perfected that. No, they uh, haven't, James. They, 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 haven't, they, haven't. No, they haven't. And it is, you're right. It is a completely different game. Like if you ask what does Clifford want to see on, on Sunday, he's like, man, oh man, kick pass is coming in. It's, it's game over. He's not going to get that. And why would go and go where kind of give that space, they're, they're going to set it up to frustrate them. The biggest thing I would say, if you're playing that type of defence, and Galway actually did it quite well themselves against their man in the quarter final, where you've got to turn the defence. So if you have guys really wide, you need your full forward line literally on the end line, spread across corner, pull, and the other corner. Your wing forwards are lit- literally nearly off the pitch. Yeah. Chalk on their boots. So, and then if there's 12 guys, they're all going to protect the centre channel. If you just play across the front of them with slow hand passes, there's no penetration, you're not probing at all, that is easy to defend against. Easy. You you, 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 the, the defenders just have to just watch the ball going across in front of them. The biggest thing you have to do is turn them. Now, if you pop the ball into the corner, now all of a sudden, five or six of those defenders have to turn their back and then face into the corner. Now, you got to get it out of that corner pretty quickly, but you're going to suck over four or five or six defenders there. It's how quick you can recycle the ball around. And, and with Dublin, you're right, we worked 
Jesus Christ, like you will not believe the, the time we put into this system of play because we were play- a lot of teams we were playing were playing this style against us. Bar the likes maybe Kerry or Mayo. Everyone else was kind of, we get 12 or 13 bodies back. That's my fear for Kerry that I haven't seen them do that yet. They like Cork, it's Porky Rain is like it's basically a juvenile pitch they're playing in. So it's probably not an accurate reflection, but they struggle with that for 50 minutes. Cork just get tired and then Kerry kind of, it opens up and then it's game over. Galway aren't going to get tired, but it's a much bigger pitch and it's harder to do. But I think Galway have used this defensive system all through the summer and they've gotten better and better and better at it. It's one of the key attributes is the wider in the all early final. Whereas Kerry, you're right, James, I haven't seen them perfect this style of play and I think it's crucial for them to win this game on Sunday. It's, they can't just keep kicking the ball in because it's just going to keep coming back out. They've got to turn the defence, they've got to probe, they've got to be really patient They've got to work to get Clifford on the ball. You can't just say, we hope he gets on it. You've got to work to get him on it. And it's, yeah. it's t- that does not just happen. I'm telling you, there's I, so much that goes into that. I think, yeah, I think there's a lot of good points there. I think the Galway system has been getting better, but in every yeah. game, they have creaked a little bit too. That system is not perfect yet either. And I think if Kerry get a purple oh, patch, so. that could be that could be Con- Concentration yeah. is probably the biggest thing because... When you're back there, you probably are doing a lot of watching and kind of a lot of scanning. And if if you zone out for a second, there could be someone got in behind you, or as Paddy said, it, you could be turned. And someone always does, James. Someone, someone always, always switches off. Forward. That's why, like sometimes a forward coming back there, they're a hindrance because the organizing defender kind of says, right, James has that spot. And next thing, James doesn't have that spot. <laughs> James is just filling a hole there. You, you never had that spot, Jimmy. <laughs> So like it sometimes but you the other thing, Jimmy, like oh, there's yeah. no communication here because you won't hear a thing. Can't hear anything, in Can't hear will, you, will you not on all the final day here, Anathan? No, not, not a thing. Wouldn't hear a man five yards from. All just, you hear is your own your own thoughts. Really, <laughs> your own demons. What am I doing back here? <laughs> <laughs> Why am we here? So so that is that. Look, that's the challenge for God. We're not masters at this. Like it's not. They, they've been doing no. it. We've seen it really for the f- first time. Against Mayo, really work. Two, two or three months ago in Castle Bar. So it's not like they've been doing it for, for 10 years. Like. Yeah. And but, it only worked for 55 minutes as well. But, but it is. It's an improvement for them. But there's question marks over Galway as well. If they were masters of this, they'd be, this wouldn't be their first alarm of final. Mm. Put it that way. They'd, they'd be at the top table a lot longer than they are. So they've improved massively, but it's going to be challenged to the max. You've got some of the best forwards in the game they're coming up against. So it's going to be asked questions. And for Kerry, defensively, this is the biggest challenge they'll face this season. It's not going to be a May or a Dublin, which were great games to watch because it's like it's more traditional. Whereas Galway, Galway are going to ask them questions that Kerry attack that but probably the last big question mark over Kerry. What do you yeah. feel? Yeah. We're going to get into the Kerry defensive matchups in one second, but there's a Trojan horse in our matchups from earlier on. We're hardly leaving Jack Lynn on Paul Ganey. Why not? Maybe Ganey could build a pressure, lads. No, Ganey. oh lads, no, hold on a second. The, the, the hype mismatch there between Ganey and Jack Lynn. Jack Lynn is, is a supreme young footballer, under 20 captain for Galway two years ago. But there's a height difference there that if you're a full forward, you are you are loving that. But Ganey, Ganey's six, Ganey's only six foot, maybe six one. He's Shawnee, here, though. Here's Mark and Mark Shawnee's the same, thing. and Clifford's six two. Like they're all they're all big units. Yeah. Who who would you put him on then? Like he's earned his place. Yeah, I don't. I don't see. We were asked the question in the, on the live show. The last I'm not time. questioning Ganey's place. Kerry go, yeah. Are Kerry going to go with the long ball and in high and risk possession like that, and put themselves under pressure for the counter attack and have Con- Conroy pinging the ball 50 yards to Shane Walsh on the run? I don't think they are. Well, I think they're going to rule out that high ball, and they're going to go. I, th- I think there may be times, Jimmy. Like I don't see this going where where Galway literally just for the entire game have. 13 guys back or 12 or 13 guys in the 45. The biggest area where Kerry can move the ball quickly, and it's the, this is the same for both teams, is opposition kickouts. If they go, and I think both teams will go after kickouts. I think Kerry will push up on Gleason big time, but I think Galway are going to be brave with Shane Ryan as well. If you win a kickout, that is the time to get the ball in quickly because the team isn't set, or if there's a sloppy turnover. Like we've seen, we've seen Dublin's goal against Kerry more than hand passing the ball straight away. The second he loses that ball to Dublin. You're just like, goal is on. Go. Mm. It's wide open. 
And that's that's where if Kerry turn go way over, which they've been doing with their defensive system, like I say, Kerry's plus, much like always, has been their defensive solidity this season, improvement for both teams. Then you've got to look and say, Galway aren't going to have guys back there. If we're slow in our transition, we're going to let them get back. But if they turn them over on the 45 and they have an outlet like Paddy Clifford or if David Moore gets the ball and he's well able to hit a 60-yard kick pass, I think there is uh, opportunities for that kick to go in. But yeah. if it's slow, if it's you know kind of ponderous build-up, then, then the kick is not going to be on Galway. We're going to have 12, 30 guys back. In the, in the, 29, in the 2019 replay, Kerry Dublin. I don't think it was said, but there was kind of a feeling where we said Kerry full forward line has it aerially over the Dublin full back line, and we relentlessly kept putting the ball in. Yeah, and it kept coming back out, and instead of getting a foothold in the game, we were just chasing shadows, and instead of getting settled and kind of working a few scores, getting everyone into the game, we were suddenly all on two turnovers each after 10 minutes, do you know? So yeah. like, uh, if Kerry do do that, I hope that they kind of, they kind of wait until maybe the, the right chance, maybe even in the second half, when things yeah. when don't get back as quick, rather than, rather than giving away turnovers, not out of finally can get into your head. Okay. I'd be surprised if it isn't tried at some stage, but it, that's interesting that your, your reference in 2019 and how early Kerry tried to bomb ball in. Yeah. Because... There's, there's going to be questions asked that go away defense if that ball goes in long, even, even if there is 12 back. Paddy, you're saying about the pace of that attack. Let's look at the Kerry defensive matchups then. Are we saying it's clear cut? It's Graham O'Sullivan and Rob Finnerty. Jason Foley is taking Damian Comer, and Tom Sullivan is tagging Shane Walsh. Yeah, cut and dry. I can't see it being ADS. Hmm. And it's an opportunity for Finnerty there. <laughs> Yeah, Finnerty's conference is shot after McGeig. <laughs> do you think it's shot? Or is it just like oh, Chrissy McGeig is this bloody oh, good? Like? You got a dust on all right. He would, have, he would have learned a lot from that. Yeah. Finnerty. Would you learn a lot? Have you, did you ever get a dust on like that, James, where you were just completely shut down and you could bounce back from it? Yeah, absolutely. Loads of times. All the time. <laughs> but like, it's the best way of learning because you kind of think that night you said, I should have made that run rather than the one I did. What was it to think like? Yeah, it forced you because oh, after playing shite, now Infinity didn't play badly, but he was, he was beaten. You you completely think about the game way more than if you're after playing well. After you've played well, you just park it and you're kind of just buzzing and move on to the next one. But when you play badly, you completely overthink it probably for a couple of days. <laughs> Infinity would have thought about every ball and he'll have decided what he should have done better. So the learning is going to be incredible. What yeah. he has to do is look at Carol Hegarty for inspiration. Poor yeah. semi final, match winner in the All Ireland final. 100%, 100%. Like, but what I think that say? Morley, Comer is going to be in for it, I reckon, because Morley's done such a great job sweeping. He's going to have a more defined approach. It's going to be sitting in front of Foley and Comer. Take away that goal threat. And if they, if they beat us on points, they beat us on points, which arguably they, they don't have enough firepower. I, I can see Morley really helping Foley there in, in combating Comer. And in that regard, Paddy, you tipped him as a potential breakout star this year. Matty Tierney, he's been hot and cold throughout the championship. He has been, yeah. Stood up against Darren Ma, was quiet-ish against Derry. Yeah. But perhaps that was just the type of game that it was. If Tyg Morley is so caught up in that dropping off in cover and Comer, can Matty Tierney have a massive influence on this game? If Calvary are going to win this game, they're underdogs, right? They need massive performances from Tierney, McDade, Conroy, Walsh, and Comer. It's, it's like, Galway won't win this game if two or three of these guys are anonymous. It's just, they can't afford that. They can't afford that. They need, like you look at the last day, I thought they were pretty quiet across the board. Galway, so, so-called marquee players, bar Comer. Walsh kicks his freeze, but that's not going to be enough on Sunday. Walsh needs to come in and have the game that his talent is there. If he comes out and, and he goes toe to toe with Thomas Sullivan and starts doing Shane Walsh things where bursting through for a goal or clipping two or three points as well as his freeze. Comer wins his battle with, with Jason Foley and Tierney and McDade have the games like they did against their ma, not their game against Derry. Galway can win the game there, absolutely. But they need every one of those guys to stand up. And, and again, we used to do challenge earlier on this season and the part talking about Donegal, where Donegal have loads of 
you feel like Donegal have loads of match winners, but they never seem to play well in unison in mm. one game. They never deliver a big performance. Was if Galway were to win this game on Sunday, Tierney, McDade, Comer, all these guys, they need to be eight, nine out of ten. All of them. If one or two of them are quiet, like they have been, all of them throughout the season, other guys have stood up at different times, which is a positive, but to win the biggest prize and coming into a game where, where, where they're, they're underdogs, they all need to deliver big time. Um, and the performance that they gave against Derry in the semi-final will not be good enough. That's the pressure. James, Jason Foley has played quite a bit of his Kerry career in cornerback at times. He's now, he's, he's had spells of cornerback, I suppose, at Morley at three maybe, and it's kind of yeah, settled yeah. out at Morley at yeah, six yeah. And, and he's three. Has he, he faced a challenge as big as Damien Comer yet? Has he faced a challenge? In championship form, in a, like in a... I don't, I don't in, think he has, to be honest. The form Comer's in, he's red hot. His confidence is through the roof. He's played, he's played great football all summer. He's coming in, he's got responsibility on his shoulders. He is going to be the toughest gig the Foley's had. The only thing is, first of all, I've marked... Jason, he is a terrific defender. Uh, so underrated still. Hopefully after this after this season, that, that won't be there anymore. But he's come of age slowly but surely. But the one thing he can take comfort in is that he's not out in his own there just marking Comer. Like Kerry are going to have a complete unit style defence thanks to Paddy Talley. They've put this together to have unbelievably tight full back line markers but also cover them with everyone else. And have this team unit which they've perfected. So as much as Comer is a threat, if you can stop that kick pass from 50 yeah. yards going to the top of the into his hand, which which Morley is there for, you're you're kind of limiting him into hand passes and maybe loop shots, which mm. they're going to be happy with. If you can stop him getting the goal chance, it's job done as far as I'm concerned for Foley. Okay. Where do you think Paddy Clifford factors into all this? You move them very quickly from 13 out to 11. Is Are we going to see Kieran Malloy tagging him? Are we going to see John Daly, who's more of a sitting player, plays sort of like the Morley role, a bit more of a playmaking role for Galway? Who do you think could stop Paddy Clifford, who was man of the match in the All-Ireland semi-final against Dublin? That is going to be a very interesting matchup because... Very important, isn't he? Like? Yeah. it will be very important in this game. Like, it would be massive. in particular. And Paddy will wander. Paddy won't stay at 11. He'll vacate to leave Shawnee fill that spot. Clifford leave him fill that spot the odd time. So it's a hard matchup to call. Like, if you're a Galway, do you say, right, we have this fella vacating. Can we put him on the back foot by putting someone attacking him? Or do they just have someone tagging him? Because if Galway go through the carry forwards, if they tag everyone with a defensive mindset, they're going to run out of options. They have to go at them with something. They have to put Kerry on the back foot with some sort of a, a selection. So I, I don't know. Will they will they keep Daly at centre back and just Mark Clifford? I think they probably will, and they'll just leave they'll leave him after a certain point, and Daly will pick him when he comes close to the goal. I don't think I don't think they'll bring up bring out anyone else. Okay. They'll have Heaney, they'll have Heaney back there as well. Heaney possibly, yeah. Yeah. The goalkeepers, Paddy, you mentioned that you expect both teams to put serious pressure on Conor Gleeson yeah. and Shane Ryan. Were you impressed with Shane Ryan's composure late on against Dublin? Uh, no, look, I think he's good. That's why I'm surprised earlier on in the season where it was kind of up for debate. We always felt playing against Shane Ryan. He got his kickouts off well. Um, I think more so the impressive thing for Kerry was the movement at that point. That Dublin were pushing up, the game was on the line, the guys are knackered. And Kerry were still showing, making three, four runs. We touched on the Brino, uh, Brian Begley, Buglock, whatever it's called. <laughs> it's, uh, he makes the run out. Like that's, that's a hard gig. When someone's hanging out of you to make two or three or four runs to get the ball, it's, yes, it's good from Shane Ryan, but it's also good from the Kerry defenders. But I feel, again, with Keane O'Neill, you've seen what Galway did to Derry's kickouts in the second half when they knew, or on Lynch, what do Derry want to do? They want to keep the ball. Right, so let's try and push up and make them go long and make possession 50-50. And you can see it. They have four or five guys up in the full forward line. They're all jumping around. That's an obvious tactic that this is like, we're going after this now. They force the kickouts long out to the likes of a Tierney or a Kelly or a Conroy 
out there. They're all big men. Galway get possession, and that ultimately wins them the game and breaks the dam with Derry. I think they'll be brave in this regard with Keane O'Neill, with Joyce, that they can see, like we say, Kerry's great defensive system, the great defensive record. The easiest way to break that down is win steals on kickers because they're not set. And that is the opportunity to do it. So I feel that's an area where Galway will focus on it. Again, it might not be for the full 70 minutes. It might be after Shane Walsh freeze. It might be at certain times in the game, maybe the first 10, 10 before half time. But there's, without a doubt, there's going to be periods in this game where Galway are going to push up and try and win those steals. And without a doubt, Kerry going to do it to Conor Gleeson. 100%. 100%. And the same, the exact same applies there. If Kerry can win steals, Galway aren't going to have 12 or 13 guys back on their own kicker. So if Moran, if they force him long and Moran fetches one or Jack Barry fetches one 60 yards from goal, now the kick pass is on the Clifford. So that's the risk and reward. You're pushing up, you're stepping up onto the kick out. But if you win two or three of them, if you win two or three of them, that could be one, two, or it could be two goals. It could be the win and lose of the game. And I think both teams would be brave in that regard. Um, but I think Shane Ryan probably, for me, if I was looking, who, who would ideally have a goal between these two guys? It would be Shane Ryan or Conor Gleeson. Yeah. Do you know what? When, when the kickouts are going along like that, which hopefully, hopefully, for the sake of the game, there's a lot of kickouts going along. Yeah. It's great for the inside forwards. Oh, yeah. If, 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 you're in, if you're playing corner forward and your goalie is chipping it to the corner back, you're going, oh, lads, they have to work it all the way up now before I even... 30 seconds before, at, at best before the ball comes to the yeah. pitch. But if the ball goes long and your midfielder catches it or breaks yeah. it to one of your fellas, you're an option after two seconds. Yeah. So it could be that could actually be so important for the likes of Comer and Clifford that if they win primary possession long, that that passes on to them early. Gives them oxygen. Yeah. What were you like in a press, James? Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> We used to do, we did, I think. We were like the main man. We used to be looking at Jimmy going, how do we deal with this fella's tackling? Like? <laughs> <laughs> the press, I'd say, do you know what? When when we were doing presses, any sort of a press was putting a goalie off at the time. Okay. Bar probably Cluxton. Um, if there was if there was four on the full forward line, he wasn't trying to put it over you into the half back spot or he wasn't trying to be clever and give it to one of the full back line players. He was going along. So once you were in your position, you were big, you were waving, you were making noise. You can you could shout at the goalie at that time, last year and the year before. You can't you can't say any of them anymore. Okay. You know, you know. Well, nobody would hear you anyway. What's that? Nobody would hear you anyway. Just a wave, yeah. nothing. They're all waving at the goalkeeper. But even if you're in the eye, they would just go along. So that's the idea of a press though. That's what the goalie fellas are at. They're in their positions and they're just making themselves massive. So there's no short option. And then it's going along and midfielders have to do their job. Okay. You were trying to get at that I was shitting the press like. No, I, I wasn't. No, I, I, had, I had a bad experience. Felt. I think that was particularly I, harsh. I, I just had a bad experience in the press at training on Sunday and I was trying to get a bit of Not for everyone. The press is not for everyone. No. Why was it going out on top of your midfielder? You no, know, no, I was, I was inside. Andy Moore and Eskin. We yeah, just I, was, I felt like a lost sheep running around in circles as I was getting a bit but of a... three, it, you can't press with three inside enough of forward line anymore. You need four. There's at least four. It's yeah. got to be everyone. You gotta to commit to it. If you're going half hours, you're finished. Yes. You yeah. Ross Common against Clare in that the qualifier game where they put everyone forward. Cork against Limerick, where you now they get away with a Cork to Ross Common though, but they they eight guys up and they're not doing a bloody thing and it's a waste of time. So Galway won't do that. Galway, if they're pushing up, Keen O'Neill and Joyce will have those guys, they'll be all over it. energy and carry the exact same with Jack O'Connor. So and it's a, a very, it could be a very rewarding tactic for whatever team comes out on top there on Sunday. Because yeah. expect it to be cagey, but if you win steals, that's your opportunity to hurt the opposition. And both teams will know that. Awesome. Yeah. So are we expecting a scoreline similar to Kerry Dublin? I think so. Yeah. I do anyway. I can still see, I can still see Kerry kicking 18 points. Do you know, I can see them kicking. If they do, that's it. They'll win the game. Yeah, I can't see Galway getting that. No. Is James, I know you're not an advocate for making many changes in the midst of a championship season oh. like this. You wouldn't advocate for Kerry starting six starting forwards. Um, we have a question in here. I'm going to get to a couple of questions from our football pod listeners. No, Stephen O'Brien was probably quiet the last day, but 
his pace will be important. Theo Frisbee wants to know, do Kerry go with six shooting forwards? No, I, I no, because they wouldn't have played with six shooting forwards yet this year. So don't change it. Don't do a Guardiola on it and drop Rodri for the Champions League. <laughs> final. No, just do, whatever is working is working. And it, the six forwards having chemistry is probably more important than, than yeah. the names on the jerseys, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't, I don't think changing, I think the game... Yeah, you keep Gady in, we'll expect to see more in him and the Spillans off the bench again, as normal. Tony I, Ross I, I think so. Like that game, Kerry Dublin was frantic. It was helter-skelter. There was turnovers. It was going up and down. Like for the fellas who were probably 32, 31, 32, they were on the fringes of the game, like Gainey, Stephen O'Brien. Yeah. Maybe David Moore and was, you know, they were still very effective, but they weren't as probably dominant as the, the younger, fresher lads. But this game, I'm expected to be a lot kind of more tactical, probably less, less, less of a pace to it. And Gainey would thrive in that. So will Stephen. He could still be able to, to inject the pace. So okay. I'd be keeping, I'd be keeping the same six personally. Dara wants to know. You've already answered this. Who would replace Gavin White? You reckon Paul Murphy is a straight in. a straight swap there? Obviously, he takes away from Kerry offensively in the yeah. sense that White can punch the blanket. But we saw the value in Paul Murphy having the ball in his hands with the clock in the red. And he finds David Clifford with that pass where Clifford wins the free. You know, other players might try a hand pass there. Other players might look to go lateral. Paul Murphy backed himself to pop that ball into Clifford's path. Murphy's an excellent player. I don't see that as a particular weakness. Like, okay, Gavin White, you lose that bit of pace going forward. But I think Murphy on the ball and his experience and his know-how. Like he he has he's one of the few guys he's been there and done. He was man of the match in the 14 final. Yeah, he's a really experienced player. He's been excellent for carry over years. I don't see that as a massive weakness if he has to come in um, and nearly assist Tyke Morley in managing that defence, kind of making sure lads are there. So I wouldn't be if I was carry, I wouldn't be overly concerned if if that change has to happen. Colin Regan has a question here. Does Tom Sullivan have the physicality for Shane Walsh? Would that be a question that you'd be asking? I don't think so. Tom is stocky, strong. He's small in stature, but he, he's strong, like very strong. And we saw McCluskey. McCluskey did a very, uh, very similar, similar build to similar Tom stature. Sullivan. Yeah. It's, it's just about when you use your physicality. I think that the, the key to marking Shane Walsh is to get hands on him before he makes his run. Hmm. But if you're chasing him, you can forget about it. He's yeah. too powerful, too quick. But if you can kind of see he's thinking about making a run here, I'll just give him a dunt in the chest or I'll just put him off his stride here and missed his timing, I think that's the best chance to get him. And has Sullivan got that up his sleeve? Yeah. He does. Yeah, have you been marked by Tom Sullivan, Paddy? Have we? Uh, no, but I know he does, yeah. Yeah, yeah. James Not in training, Tom. would he Would he be at yeah. that, no? He would, but... He's such a silky, stylish footballer. That, you uh, know, he might get the belt as well. Like, like in, in, in Kerry training, realistically, he's going to be marking corner forward who's playing corner forward, where Shane Walsh is going to be coming out the field. Yeah. Like, it would be a different test for Tom. Like he's gonna to have to be wired into it. He's You're gonna... nailed down that that thing is that that that's a matchup. Man. I'd be shocked if it wasn't. Where would you go, Paddy? No, I just I'm just because Walsh kind of drifts away and drifts out. Would would, would Tom would sort of go all the way out with him? But look, like you say, he's Kerry's best defender. He's not a good match for for Comer, so he goes on to the next man, which would be which would be Shane Walsh. But I just think it's it's bringing Tom Sullivan out, but we've seen how, how good he has been out the pitch as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, a, a Bugley has I, played... I'm just... The big, I'm intrigued, and I know we keep banging on about this, like, but for Shane Walsh's performance on, on Sunday is like, if he lights it up, he has the potential to be a match winner. And it's always potential with Shane Walsh. He has everything in the locker. And we said it right from, geez, I'd say three or four months ago on this, if Galway are going to do anything this year, Shane Walsh has to be the man to do it. And Sunday's the opportunity. We, we said we were chatting with, with Michael, obviously, last week at the show, and the, the sense of just unbelievable opportunity this is for Galway. You feel like Kerry are going to be there and thereabouts. They're going to be knocking on the door for the next four or five years. Winning it is different, but they're going to be right in the mix. Galway, it is kind of out of nowhere. Like, they were play, they're in Division 2, and they're in the all the final. This, will they be back? How many more chances will they get at it? And it was incredible listening to Michael Meehan, one of our best ever players. The thing like just never got there, never, never got, got back there. And he just thought, I, yeah. I'd be here, we'll get two or three goals at this. You yeah, might not. And for Galway, for Shane Walsh, we're saying he could do a good old Hegarty on it on Sunday. He has that potential 
and he announces himself and he doesn't have to do a thing ever again. You could say, I delivered on my potential. We won the All-Ireland. I shot the lights out against Kerry. That's the opportunity. I'm thinking, grab it. Like. Yeah. And that battle, if it is with Tom O'Sullivan, is, is massive to their chances of success. And like I say, clipping over a couple of frees is all well and good. That's, they need more from him on Sunday. Yeah. That's not going to be enough to win this game. Yeah. A couple more questions. That's, I think that's a very interesting one. A couple more questions. I think this might be playing into the fact that we saw a very different go away against Armad than we did against Derry. Maybe that was horses for courses. But this is from Mayo Mike, 2017. For the Wolf, <laughs> is go away coming into this game in a more predictable manner a benefit to them? What do you mean? I didn't ask the question. It's Mayo Mike. I presume he means the fact that we saw we saw an Armagh, a performance against Armagh that was perhaps, you know, they went and they shot the lights out. Against yeah. Derry, they, they kind of quelled Derry. I think that's a sign of a good team that they can adapt to the challenge in front of them. That it, it, if you just play one way, it's easier for teams to prepare against you. Whereas Galway have shown, they go, look, if you want to have a shootout like the Armagh game, we have guys that can do that. That's the more traditional side of Galway. I think the impressive thing has been how they've, okay, they are going to play this way. We'll grind that out. Mayo and Casabar, we'll grind that out. They've been able to adapt. That's the sign of a good team. That's the preparation from the coaches and also preparation from the players that they understand the challenge they're going to face. And I think Galway are going into this final with their eyes wide open. They will know what to expect from Kerry. They'll have a plan on how to frustrate them and hurt them. So I think that's been a massive positive for Galway. That it's not just... We can play one way and one way only. And if that doesn't work, well, then we've no plan B. Galway have shown throughout this season to their credit that they can adapt. And I think I think they'll be well set for this game on Sunday. Whether it's going to be enough or not, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to get to our predictions in just a moment. I'm going to wrap it up then for episode 29 of the Football Pod. Ooh. Final question. It's from Owen Kenny. Who's the front runner for Footballer of the Year at the moment, before the final? I think that all comes down to Sunday now, doesn't it? Like, doesn't it, like for Kerry the cliff is obviously in there. Shawnee's in it after if Shawnee has another worldly on on Sunday, he's right in the mix because he's done it in the, the Dublin game, that iconic trade. And then say for, for Gal if Comer shoots the light out and Galway win, he's nailed on for it. Like so the final is massive, Jimmy, isn't it? Like if you have a big final the final is worth treble. Yeah, it yeah. is. It's, yeah, like, it is. It's the treble points for yeah. a big performance in the final, but like today, who's, who do you feel has been Kerry's best player to Clifford's the best player. Clifford is the best player in the country. Like he is. He's yeah. he is. Now you still got like Tom Sullivan. Tom Sullivan beats Shane Walsh out the gate, gets a couple of points. Yeah, he's, very on. he's in the mix. But it'd be those three, wouldn't it? Tom Sullivan, Sean Shea, and, and the Cliff. Yeah, I think so. One, I think. If one of them lights it up, gets a man of the match and they win it, they'll get it. For Galway. It's just coma, really, for Galway, isn't it? Unless Shane Walsh. No, no. Unless it's had some big games. You're forgetting one player from Kerry, lads, and he's been man of the match in some two All Ireland. So I think definitely two All Ireland semi finals. Potty Clifford. Or he's yes. definitely Kerry's best player against. Don't know if he's a player of the year. I think you need maybe a bit more pizzazz or something. But again, look, if Potty Clifford gets man of the match in the final, he scores four or five points. Yeah, he's right in the mix, but. It is like the final is and it is actually worth treble. Like, yeah, yeah. You if you're the match winner in the all or the final and go ballistic, like, like remember Sean Cavanaugh won it in 08, he got five points from play against Kerry in the final. Like that's the type of performance like that. Hegarty quite enough all year. He could be nearly the runner for player of the year after that performance yesterday in the hurling. Like, yeah. If someone goes out and dominates this game, it's there for them. In the mix. I mean the cliff in his head, he had a great league. He was quite against Cork, Miss Limerick. He was good against Mayo, brilliant against Dublin. If he just plays to his standard, he's he has, Clifford has the brand as well. Like, like people will want to give journals will want to give it to Clifford. Yeah. Fair. I think it is important. Yeah, I don't tell it. I think it played. I think it played into Donahue's favor as well in fourteen. Yeah, yeah. He was paying the lads off, like yeah. cheeky chappy, revoluting all the lads. Like. He had the boyish good looks to go with it too. Who, uh, who, who does vote for it? Is it? I, I actually I actually don't know. Is it players and oh, players, I think. is it it's GPA players now? I yeah. think I think player of the year is actually the players above for it, yeah. I think the all stars is a committee of forty five, uh maybe less, maybe less. You used journalists. to get a car off um there used to be a GPA award and a player award. Yeah. You got a car off the GPA and you got 
Why don't you cash what perks, what perks you did you get? Into one and just took away the prices. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you get you in 14? Hey, what did you, you get in 14? Oh, I don't right? know. A few what did you get? Come on. Can you remember? Go, turn the camera to the left and show us what you got in 14. <laughs> Go on. Yes, do so it. Laminated check. <laughs> You'll have to, okay. You may have to do it for his next week. Check. Yeah. We don't know. We'll see on Sunday. Right. But front runners, those three carry lads. And for me, probably Comer. Really? Is there anyone? Galway's success has been kind of built around the team. Like I said, different yeah. times, different players have stood up. Team in the system. Um, so it's hard to know. Okay. Paddy. Yeah. I'm going to go to you first. Prediction for the All Ireland final. Will you give me a score? Difference as well. I think Kerry are going to win this one. I think it's going to be a hell of a lot closer than people think. I think they'll nick it by three points. I'm going to go before James here. I'm going to leave James to last. I'm going to go. I think it's going to be very close. I think it's going to be cagey, as you said earlier on. Cagey, yeah. I think it's so difficult. The matchups, I find it difficult to figure out a few of them. I think the Galway defensive system is nearly as important. As yeah, their the individual matchups, matchups. won't be worried about that. Yeah, That's so I know. think their Trump card. While it'd be incredible if Galway were to come from nowhere and win all Ireland, I think Kerry are going to win this one by five. Five. Yeah. Five is a big margin, like in an All Ireland final. Like that's a comfortable win. Like I think it's in the mix of 63, 64. Is it, is it five pulling away or pulling no. up? I think it's in the mix of 63, 64 minutes and then. Clifford's going to go ballistic in the last five minutes. No, I don't know, but I just think they're going to they're going to stretch it away. Galway won't be in touching distance in injury time. Oh, Jimmy, carry by what, 10? Well, hang on. You all went Galway up above and fucking kill McCud. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to poke you. Like, I don't you. think we made predictions of Kill McCud. I didn't actually make a prediction. Yeah. I was making the case of how Galway would win the game. And there is a case to be made. If they were to win it. There and is the pressure. Case, and there, there is a case. There is the a pressure. Not being set for them yet. There is pressure. The pressure is all on. Kerry and Clifford and O'Shea. I, I honestly, I, I, ah, hold on. I do Fresh not. Agree with that. Well. This is not our final. It's, True, I'm money mess. It's, I'm it's a go. shot to nothing. You've nothing to lose. All that bullshit. You do have you've an all out of final to lose. There's pressure on both teams. Massive opportunity. There is. The only thing is, the Kerry boys coming through that Dublin game will give them such confidence. Like they, there was still a, not a fear factor, but there was something to get over in Dublin. Like the they team, went into that into the Galway game with just confidence rather than that kind of. Fear factor, can we get over the line? They know they're they're probably better than Galway, so that confidence will, will send them a good stead. So go on, yeah, carry by how much? I gonna split the difference, I'll carry by four. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> there are the predictions on episode 29 of the football pod. Thank you all very much. For the kingdom, huh? Yeah. I know. Last time we all backed someone, it was awfully in the. I don't think we backed all three <laughs> together since. We all backed yeah. Cavan in the Stalter Cup, I think. But yeah. they're cursing them. Kildare on the 20s. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Lads, thank you very much. James, thanks again for everything on the football Sorry. pod. Paddy Andrews, on your birthday, thank you so much for taking yeah, the time. Do me a bit. I'll be birthday. Play. I'd say all the listeners appreciate it a lot. To everyone at home for listening in and to everyone who came to the show last Thursday night, it was class. We hope to see you at a venue near you very soon. Thanks, lads. We'll, uh, James We're will hear you on, on the radio. Sunday. We're all doing a little bit of work on Sunday. We're all Sunday, there on Sunday. Right? James will hear you on the radio and off the ball with Joe Malloy on Sunday. Looking forward to hearing it. Paddy, we'll be watching the game together. Yeah. And we'll all see each other at some stage after the full time whistle. I'll be there James, full Galway kit. Best of luck. <laughs> Thanks, boys. Good night, lads. God bless. See you at the weekend. Bye bye.